So user stories are more than just requirements. So in this video, I'll walk you through how I use and manage user stories in a tool like Azure DevOps, what information I'll capture on them, how I use Azure DevOps to track my user stories and progress them throughout the life cycle, and stay to the end of this video where I'll share with you some additional tips and tricks on how best to use user stories and how to manage them in Azure DevOps. Let's get started. So first, let's quickly cover what are effectively user stories, right? So simply put, a user story is a simple way to describe a feature or a function that the user wants from a software application. It's important that the user story captures the who, the what, and the why of the requirements and do not focus on the how. So let's take a look at the key components of a user story. So you wanna have a title for the, your user story. You need a description with additional details. You wanna have acceptance criteria with specific rules or scenarios that that user story needs to deliver. You wanna have effort often calculated in story points. Then you wanna have a priority for the requirements that will help you effectively prioritize the requirements you need to focus first when you wanna deliver your software. So let's take a look how those key components fit into a sample user story now. So if we look at this sample user story, and this is how user story looks like in Azure DevOps with specific fields. So if you cover those five key fields or those five key elements that are captured on a user story, you can see the first one here, the title. So for example, brief title, case assignment and routing, brief enough to quickly understand what it's about. Then you have a description, which is here described as, you know, as a user, I want to something so that I can have benefits of. So those kind of additional details can be captured here. Your acceptance criteria are all, are all the specific rules and the scenarios that that user story need to deliver and cover so that it is accepted. And then on your right hand side, you have your effort, which is calculated here in story points. And then you have your priority. So let me show you now how you can create and manage user stories directly in Azure DevOps. So there are different ways of creating items and user stories, right? So let me show you a few of them. So if you go to boards and you start to work item, a very easy way is that you can go from here and create your user story. You can also go, if you have some boards and some project going in, you can already create them directly from the boards or from a backlog, right? So if you go to you know, your specific Epic feature, you can create your user story directly from there. Let me start the simple way. So I'll just create it from work items and then user story. And then you have to specify here a title for the user story, right? So let's do case auto assignment, for example. And as simple as that, your user story is created. It got an ID. You can have, it has a state, of course. You can then assign it to someone and then you can effectively track it from there, right? Um, as we said, there is a description and you can see the description is already pre-filled. So that's a rule I configured um, to, to fill the description creation of the user story. So stay to the end of this video. I will share with you some additional tips, including this one. So as we said, acceptance criteria, then discussions of how what's happening on that user story. And then if you want to discuss with someone the history of the user story, you can discuss it here story point priority that we covered before and some additional fields that I will cover, right? So that's really the starting point for your user story, how to easily create a user story, right? So now the second thing that we want to do is um, effectively start managing that user story. So let me assign that user story, for example, to iteration two. So once it is assigned to iteration two, I can effectively maybe go to my board and on my board, what I will do, I will just filter out everything out and leave only that user story. So let me now walk you through the life cycle of how to manage a user story, right? And again, there is different way of managing user stories and how they evolve over time. Let me show you how one way of doing it, how I would see it being done. So effectively, your user story is created in uh, st states new, and then it will effectively go through a life cycle of in analysis where additional details will be added, then it goes to in dev, 
where the development team start collaborating and building that user story or configuring that user story. Once they done, it goes to test. The tester comes in doing their testing and then goes to UAT and so forth, right? So um, if you want to know more how to customize the states and those columns, I, again, I have additional videos that covers how to configure those columns on the boards, how to configure the states of user stories. So I won't cover and spend too much time in this video about that. But the life cycle of the user story really starts here where effectively uh, user story is new when the team decides, you know, they might, as a new user story, they want to spend maybe a little bit of time kind of understanding a bit what is that user story about. So I'll just copy paste, right? So maybe as a case manager, I want cases to be automatically assigned to a team based on case subject. So that cases are worked on by the most appropriate team. So that is kind of the as a user, I want to do something so that I get some benefits, right? So that is kind of the starting point for your user story it has been enhanced with a little bit of a description and then what you can do is the team during the sprint you can decide that you want to maybe do some analysis on it right so now once you have your title you have your description you start adding additional details right so for example acceptance criteria right so acceptance criteria maybe we have some acceptance criteria just copy paste some acceptance criteria here or effectively you have an analyst or, or a product owner or yourself in some case, adding you know scenarios or acceptance criteria. So first scenario for the acceptance criteria is that you want your cases to, um, so given a new case is created manually or automatically, uh, when the case subject is in the following list of uh, rules, and here I have attached additional rules that are stored somewhere, you know, in an, in an extra, in a SharePoint or whatever. You could list the rules here as well if they kind of simple enough. I kind of like to use hyperlinks with additional documentation. So if I open that, it will effectively open the rules here, nicely stored in, a, in an Excel sheet. So I can kind of manage it this way. And then you can effectively add as many scenarios as you want, right? You can actually need to cover the scenarios that, that user story and the acceptance criteria that, that that user story needs to deliver on, right? So scenario two, for example, even new case is created manually or automatically when a case subject is not in the following list, what happens? So one is if you have the subject in those business rules, what's happening and who is being assigned to? And then the second scenario is if the subject is actually not in that in that list of subject and, and rules, who is then assigned as the owner of uh, the case, right? So just simple scenarios here, but effectively, what you can then do is from there, uh, work with the business to kind of decide on the priority, priority one, two, three, four. You can change that list of values here. Let's do it the priority one, right? So basically you're doing your analysis and when your analysis is kind of done, what you can do, you move it to effectively you have done your analysis. Now the dev team comes in, start looking at this, can ask question about, you know, and who is maybe the business analyst who worked on this. Uh, could you clarify something, something? You can add print screens or whatever. So you start effectively that collaboration where, um, you know, you ask question, then the other person comes in, responds, and then effectively you build kind of a history of gathering all the requirements under that user stories. My user story is analysis, analysis is done, then effectively the dev team comes in, try to understand a bit more the user story. They might add, you know, points, maybe that's a five story point. And then effectively my user story is uh, here, um, you know, start moving to in development doing. And then here, what you can from here do as well is, you know, continue adding additional details. Maybe you want to add new child test cases or task for the, the, the configuration. So maybe the configuration team or the development team needs to configure something. So configure rules using Power Automate. That's the kind of the technology and you can add the link here. So that will create effectively, um, you know, that, that new task created. You can add the details for the task here and then you can manage that task. So that's effectively kind of the, the, the life cycle of, of that user story. When the dev team is finished, they can move it to done. And then effectively here um, as part of the done as well, um, then it's going to test doing and test done. All the way through, what I forgot to mention, all the way through you can have people being assigned. So maybe the developer is uh, building the user story, then one is going to 
uh, done, then you have a tester coming in. The tester can move that user storing in doing and assign it to themselves. You know, again, they want to be able to test that. So you kind of you can use also the assign to field um, to move to kind of um, clearly state and know who is working on that user story. Um, again, you can tweak what is shown on the card of the user story here. Again, I have additional videos to cover how to tweak that whole board and how to tweak the fields that you want to show on that use on that user story. But that's really the essence of it, right? And the idea is that once the testing is done, it goes to UAT, maybe the business test it, and then the user story is deployed to production and the life cycle of that user story is finished. And as promised, let me share with you some additional tips and tricks that I use when creating and managing user stories in Azure DevOps. So the first one is using tags on the board to help you identify quickly items you want to discuss or items that are blocked and so forth. So a board doing a real project will have effectively more than just one item. So that one item that we worked on, the case auto assignment, there was one item on the board, so easily identifiable. But in real life scenarios, you will have sometimes many user stories on a board. So effectively, you can see here our user story in analysis done, but there are many other user stories. And to quickly identify them, you know, you can use tags and styling of the card. So for example, if I would say case auto assignment is now blocked, I can just tag that user story and that will add a nice little uh, coloring of the tile. I have additional videos to show how to use tag coloring and how to use tags and so forth. But just remember, you can use tags. You don't need to use coloring, but you can easily just tag user story with additional, whatever you need to write. You can even just type in your own tagging and then it will kind of, um, you know, just show on the card and you can quickly identify this. Another tip is using additional uh, documentation to your user story. So let me just open a user story to illustrate the concept here. So you can see here in the description, I have URLs to uh, additional documents. So that is an Excel sheet. So you can see that Excel sheet here stored in a SharePoint folder with additional documentation. So what I usually do is I configure a field where I store the URL to a SharePoint folder that I create either manually or automatically with Power Automate. And then you can store your additional documents there. And then you can use that folder to reference specific documents that you can then add into the description of that user story. You can store also attachment in the attachment area. And that's pretty handy when you have images or PDF that because then you can use the preview feature of the image. If you store, start storing Word or Excel sheet here, they don't have the preview. So to see them, you'll have to download the document, right? So sometimes it's not that handy, right? So that's why I use that SharePoint uh, folder to store Word or Excel sheets. Another very important tip is that you can use effectively here, you can use uh, related work, right? So you can have parent work. So for example, that user story has a parent of a feature parent. So, and you can unlink that feature or link it back. So you add a link, you link it to an existing item and then you can select a parent from there. It will tell you if you start here, it will tell you that there is an existing parent. So it will probably give you an error message, but you can link that user stories to another parent, like a feature or directly an, an epic. You can have child task and you can have related user stories, right? So the related user story here is quite handy because if you start adding comments in the comment area and use the hashtag, so you see 95. So if I now do use hashtag 95, which is, the idea of that user story, you can effectively link that user story directly in the comment section or in the description. And by doing so, uh, Azure DevOps will automatically add that item here into the related area. So that's pretty handy as well to be able to track related user stories or related items. And finally, the last step is, as I showed you before in the video, if you want to pre-fill some fields with um, value, right? So let's say I want to create a new user story. As you can see here, the description is pre-filled already as a persona I want to intend so that overall benefit. So how do you pre-fill any fields in Azure DevOps? To do this, you have to go to the customize user story 
or the customized item, and you will have to have additional privileges in Azure DevOps to be able to do that. But then you can customize the whole layout of the card. And if I go to my description field, I can go to edit. And in the options here, I can set default value for that field, right? And that apply for that applies to any other field. You can even create your own uh, additional fields in Azure DevOps. So that's a pretty handy way for you to be able to customize Azure DevOps with additional fields, additional rules, the way you want and so forth. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more about Azure DevOps, Microsoft Business Application and related topics. So see you in the next one.